In the past, I haven't normally made Home Assistant release videos because the, the team over at Home Assistant does a really good job on their live stream of covering all the release notes. However, I did a release notes video on the last release, 2022.4, and I was asked by some of you to continue to make these. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that as much as I can. So today we're gonna to talk about 2022.5 of Home Assistant and go through the high level points of what is in that release. So the theme of 2022.5 is streamlining settings. And as noted here in the update, the most visible thing in this release is the next iteration of the settings menu. Things have definitely moved around in the settings menu, so you're gonna to have to spend some time figuring out where they are. The good news is down in the breaking changes section, they outline all of the areas where the changes have been made and where things have moved to. There's also quite a few uh, powerful automations and scripts features. Some are UI based and some are YAML based. So those of you that like to play in YAML, there's something there for you. Some of the, those of you that like to play in the UI, that's some stuff there for you as well. So let's go down and get started. The settings menu, they started doing this a few releases ago, obviously, and now this is a huge change. The reason they're doing this is they want to have everything in a logical place. Here's your settings menu, and here's a breakdown of one of the subsystem menus. Uh, menus. So let's just jump right away down to the breaking changes section and we'll talk about some of the changes to where that is. So down here in the break and changes configuration menu, it contains several changes to the configuration menu. The most important changes, configuration menu has been renamed settings, helpers has moved to device and services, blueprints moved to automations and scenes, areas is now grouped with zones, dashboard resources moved to overflow, and there's a brand new system menu housing all the system related settings. Your restart buttons, uh, updates, logs, backups, network, all of that is under the system menu. One thing to note also is that when you do a restart of Home Assistant, if it has a problem when it's trying to restart, it's gonna do a configuration check firsthand and let you know before the restart actually happens. That's a huge step because as you remember in all my videos, I talk about always run a configuration check before you do a restart. Now, when you do a restart, it will actually tell you if there's a problem before it does a restart. There is a brand new YAML tab, which contains buttons and tools to reload and check your YAML configuration, which is what I just talked about. This was under server controls before, but now it's moved to developer tools. And if we look at our Home Assistant instance here, you'll see on the left-hand side, you have developer tools with this new YAML section here. This YAML section is where you can go in and do your con check configuration button. It's no longer under server settings. And then of course, all the same individual YAML reloading is available here. But remember that's under developer tools now, it's no longer under uh, the settings section. And this again is what the settings looks like. So that's a quick overview. You need to read all of this and I'll put the link to the blog. You can go to homeassistant.io at any time and read these updates in Home Assistant itself. But that's a huge change to the way the system is set up. So make sure that you read through this so you understand where everything has moved to. Another update is finding entities even quicker than before. So you can do that by typing the E key anywhere on your in, in within Home Assistant and start searching for an entity. But you can also do that now over here and it'll pull up that same menu and you can type that as well. So an easier way to get to your entities is by clicking here or hitting the E key shortcut on your keyboard anywhere in, within this, uh, this dash top or anywhere within this interface. New automation and script features. This is a huge portion of the update. I'm not gonna go into detail on all of these things. As I mentioned, we're gonna just talk about them quickly because this is meant to be a quick overview and not a in-depth review of any of this. So when we introduced, the, when they introduced the choose action, it was a um, to provide structure that allowed for other actions to be selectively sequenced based on conditions. So what they've done now is added an if-then action via YAML uh, and here's an example of how you would do that. If no one is home, the state, entity ID, then you do this thing right here, else you do something else. So if nobody's home, for example, you can start to vacuum cleaner. Otherwise you send a message saying, we're not gonna clean because somebody's at home and we're not gonna do it right now. So there's if then, you can dig into that if you're familiar with YAML, wanna play with YAML. This is a YAML and a UI setting. You can also do it within the UI as well as noted here. All right. Calendar trigger. 
Thanks to Alan Porter, who I've worked with on the Nest integrations um, and other Google stuff. It gave the calendar integration lots of love. As it says here in the process, a new calendar trigger was added, which is available for use in your automations. It's slightly more flexible than the previously uh, option state trigger. So it's available in automations in YAML as well, and it provides lots of trigger variables. And here's an example. Trigger, platform calendar, event start, calendar, personal action, persistent notification create, and then there's a trigger, calendar, event summary, trigger, calendar, event. You can read all about this stuff in the calendar integration documentation if you're interested in that. There is a for each section now. There were several options in the past to repeat a group of actions. You could repeat it based on account while a condition passes or until a condition passes. This is an advanced feature only available uh, in YAML. And here is an example based on that. So in a for each, you can do uh, two different actions here or many actions. Uh, you can do uh, in the English language, say something and in the Dutch language, say it again. And it will repeat this for each message. And you would just do repeat item language or repeat item message. So language and message would repeat that sequence based on what your for each is up here. So that can be powerful. Again, this one's only available in YAML. Again, everything has documentation. So if you really want to dig into it, you can get into it that way. This is interesting. You can disable any trigger, condition, or action. In YAML, you would just comment out part of your automation. But if you wanted that for the UI, the only option was would or the only option would be to delete it. So now they have in this release the support for disabling a trigger action or condition without the need for removing it or commenting it out. A disabled trigger won't fire, a disabled condition always passes, and a disabled action is skipped. And you can see here a sample right here. You can enable or disable it, uh, and uh, you can also do that within YAML. Here's a disabled example in YAML itself. So instead of saying enabled true, it says enabled is false. It will just skip over this trigger right here. All right, continue on error. You can also tell your, your automations to continue even if there is an error. What this doesn't cover is if you have an error in your YAML code. If the YAML is broken, it's not gonna run. But if you have an error because of something that isn't working, and in this case, an example would be an unreliable service provider, it will skip over that and continue on to the next section of or next action so if you have something that continues to go offline or you have a service that doesn't work and your automations would stop now you can tell it to continue past that if there is a problem with that particular service and then everything else continues to run it's super helpful stopping a script you can now stop a script or automation halfway using the stop action it can be helpful if you just want part of an automation to run when you're home and run it full when you are away this is available via both the UI and YAML. You can also parallel, parallel uh, actions, run them in parallel. When I was watching the live stream, they said, basically, this is a very powerful feature. You don't want to run this unless you absolutely need to run it this way. And there was a big discussion on the live stream about why and what, uh, but you can now run things in parallel. Uh, it's quite powerful in advance. It comes with caveats. Remember to read the documentation before you decide to use this one. You can use a single state trigger for multiple entities. So that's pretty cool. You were able to do this in YAML before, but now you can do it in the UI. So you can use um, these entities to actually create or trigger an automation uh, off of these multiple entities at one time. And then you have the ability to trigger on not matching. Instead of on matching, you want to do not matching. So you can uh, do something like this, which is uh, an example. If you want to say unavailable, unknown to on. So let's say if you have a network problem and everything goes to unknown or un, or unknown or unavailable, you don't want it to switch to on, or you don't want this thing to switch if it goes from this state to an on state. So for example, if something were on, then it went unavailable and came back to on, you don't want to trigger this particular uh, automation. And you can do that here by excluding the, these, uh, these conditions or states in the not from section. There's some cleanup for shorthand for logical conditions, so you can do that. Gauge card segment colors was also added. Now you can specify colors anywhere along the gauge card. This doesn't have to be red. It doesn't have to be symmetrical. You can put it anywhere on here. You can define the segments, number of segments or colors, uh, whatever you want to fully customize this. In the productivity area, uh, you can do database optimization, so you can reduce the size, um, or this release focus on reducing the size of the database and optimizing the writing of data to the database. 
What that means is it just makes things faster and makes things more efficient so your system runs better. If you have a lot of sensors generating statistics, it now takes 30 to 100 times less time to compile the statistics. And if you're using the history stats integration, the number of database queries needed for most sensors with a fixed start time is 99% reduced. Additional improvements to the history APIs to speed up retrieving from the database uh, improves response times by 15 to 35%. Even though that's not something you see physically on your interfaces, you should feel that in response time for everything. So that's pretty awesome. If you use Insteon in the US, there's a brand new control panel for that. You can read all about it. If you don't know what that is, make sure you read about it in this blog post. Um, if it doesn't affect you, then maybe you don't care, but it was a huge deal when Insteon basically shut their doors and turned off everyone's smart home that is using the Insteon product. Now you can control it directly from Home Assistant, which is amazing. Uh, and then other noteworthy changes, each script gets a unique ID. If you run the Z-Wave JS server uh, manually in a Docker container or something else, it should now automatically be discovered on your network. If you're running Home Assistant Core Container, there's a backup create service to create the backup integration. So now you can automate your backups on a schedule. Uh, Shelly integration supports authentication for second generation devices. Sonos has a favorite sensor so you can access and use your favorites in your automation scripts and templates. And a whole bunch of other stuff on here. New integrations meter for monitoring your grilling temperature of your, <laughs> your uh, steaks and hamburgers or whatever. Uh, and then what else we have here? SAB is now available from the UI. Steam is now available from the UI. Tatui as well. Uh, as well. And then of course, always go through the breaking changes. If any of these apply to you, make sure that you read them before you go into doing an update or, of Home Assistant because you could break your system. Just if, for sure, you know, make sure you're reading about this configuration menu. We talked about that before. Z-Wave JS, uh, I use that a lot. Make sure you're running the versions here specified before you upgrade so that you can, uh, your Z-Wave network will work when you're done. So anyway, that is a lot of stuff in this release. As always, they do a good job of presenting this in the live stream. So if you want to sit down and watch that, that's uh, recommended. What I did was just hash that down into a few minutes. So you have an idea what's in here and, and so let me know if you have any questions, uh, hit me up on Discord, and uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.